Dear students, let us start the discussion on 26 January 2016 newspaper. The first article is related to the discrimination in our universities. What causes this discrimination? The major reasons include the existence of strong caste factors in the society and the reservation system which has been prejudiced or viewed as against to the merit system. It is entrenching the roots of the caste system in the universities. And there is a consistent denial from both the establishments and the students that there is any existence of the caste groupings in the university environment. First, we need to come out of this particular uh, denial mode and we have to accept that there is a strong presence of the caste and caste associations of the university. So in this case, how we shall fight this? That is need for the legal safeguards. As of now, SCST, Prevention of the Atrocities Amendment Act and UGC regulations are active to prevent this. But SCST, Prevention of Atrocities Amendment Act is not specific towards the educational institutions. UGC regulations are highly ineffective. So in this context, a law has to be made specific to the caste prevention of uh, atrocities of the caste related factors in the universities and the second thing is we have to bring in a civic culture in the universities a civic culture that has that believes in protection of the diversity and promotion of equality liberty and brotherhood among the people we shall inculcate that any discrimination based on caste race sex etc is against to the ethos or of values of education and a continuous academic assistance if you see most of the students coming from scheduled caste and tribes they are educated in the regional languages and they are mostly from rural background it means once they enter into the university they need to be given a special assistance though there are certain systems which are placed in the universities such as uh, remedial coaching etc most of them are not in uh, use in this case the Jawaharlal Nehru University it has provided for personalized academic support system which has worked well in providing a stabilized careers for the people from the uh, scheduled caste so in this context uh, elimination of any inequality that is existing in the academic institutions bringing in the scientific temper is the need of the hour and on the empowerment front, making the Dalits, the teachers and the students part of every governance structure will increase their voice. Finally, any symbols of inequality and exclusion, either it is in society or the educational institution, that have to be done away with. Coming to the Arunachal issue, so let us take a brief background of the Arunachal issue. Now, there, were, there is a ruling Congress government and there are defections from Congress to the BJP. So, the ruling Congress government did not convene an assembly. Then the governor himself has ordered for the assembly. And the second thing is, the defected faction from the Congress, it did not attract the anti-defection law and it declared itself as the real party and they tried to question authority of the chief minister and the speaker to expel them from the RLs to remove their membership. So now the defected faction started conducting their own assembly. So in these circumstances the role of the governor article 356 everything has come into question. So can a governor convene the session of an assembly without the recommendation of the council of ministers is the first thing. And second thing is an anti-defection law used by the speaker to expel the members of uh, the uh, members of Congress party who shifted to BJP to what extent uh, it is uh, correct is it not limiting the freedoms of the members of the legislative assembly and third thing is article 356 uh, can it be used when the matter is under sub judice under the constitutional bench of the court so these are the three issues we need to examine over here and the next is India United States relationships. The last year has seen a dramatic progress with regard to India United States relationships. 
On January 26th, on the same day last year, President Obama was in India. And India-US uh, Civil Nuclear Cooperation Agreement has moved forward. Um, and both the, uh, that is, President and Prime Minister agreed for an innovative solution to that. So in this context, um, even after the decision at the highest level, the things did not move forward on the civil nuclear cooperation. India is actively engaging with Japan, France, Russia, but in the United States, with the United States, it's still a major problem. The GE, Westinghouse, this did not get any orders from India at all. So in this context, the Sacramento congressman, he asked for the patience for the American industry towards taking up the business in India. And further to this, the Pakistan and Trans-Pacific partnerships are becoming the new irritants. The Pakistan, especially America, is having a double standards with regard to the terrorism and is not acknowledging the cross-border terrorism of the Pakistan. So in this case, America provides for more than $13 billion as a coalition support funds program. So it can use this money power as a leverage to control the Pakistani establishment, which it did not do. And it is trying to hyphenate India and Pakistan as victims of the terrorism, hyphenate India with the Pakistan, especially with regard to Balochistan and with regard to uh, Kashmir. On the other hand, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it may take away certain uh, fractions of uh, trade partners of India away from it. India and China are still not the partners of this particular Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now coming to the next article, India and its steps against terrorism. You know that India is a victim of series of hijacks. From 1981 till date, there are more than six to seven incidents of the airplane hijacks. But even today, we do not have an, uh, a hostage policy and we don't have something called emergency response system or crisis management system in place. So in this context, India is failing to learn from its mistakes is one thing which is Suhasini Haider tries to send across. Coming to the President Pranam Mukherjee's address to the nation, there are three important challenges he has addressed. That is growing intolerance in the society. The first thing what he says is, we have to guard our nation against the violence, growing intolerance and unreason. And with regard to impasse in parliament and failure to decision making, he said that, any time lapsed in decision making is an opportunity lost. So a consensual approach to the decision making and spirit of accommodation, cooperation shall prevail and it has to give the people an advantage of quick decision making. Finally, with regard to the Rohit Vemula's death in the University of Hyderabad, he suggested the university shall create an ecosystem of intellectual development, critical thinking and the intellectual stimulation shall be the guiding force for teaching. So these are the major things President Pranam Mukherjee has addressed. And coming to the President Francois Hollande visit to India. You know that um, the nine months back uh, during the Prime Minister Modi's visit to France, uh, there was an agreement on uh, buying of this uh, Rafale aircrafts. Now, both the governments made a government to government agreement in this regard. But the price and the date of delivery on these issues, the discussions are still moving on. And added to that, there is a cooperation in space. And also with regard to railways and with regard to solar energy. In the space, the next Mars mission and micro infrared thermal mission and even satellite launches, India and France are going to cooperate with each other. Yesterday we have discussed that uh, India and France are coming close with regard to the counter-terrorism. In this case, intelligence sharing, uh, judicial uh, proceedings, etc. There are certain agreements that have come into existence. And on to the nuclear front and defense front, uh, the Rafale deal and also establishment of the nuclear reactors in Jaitapur, there are an uh, important progress. And uh, France is the supporter of India to the UN Security Council and also multilateral uh, treaties such as Australia Group, Westerner Group, and, that is Nuclear Suppliers Group, etc. So in this context, um, 
this visit is expected to take forward the relations to the next level. Added to that, the France committed to Euro 300 million, that is equivalent to 2200 crore rupees towards the solar energy. So, President Holland has opened the Indian Solar Alliance, which was announced by the Prime Minister Modi at the Climate Change Conference in Paris. So, this Indian Solar Alliance is for cooperation between the developed and developing nations to transfer the fresh technologies from developer to developing nations and also to facilitate the use of solar or use of the energy from the sun as an energy source for the households, clean energy sold for the households. These are the things which are being announced for. And coming to ease of doing business index, the first thing is a central registration center and also Government process re-engineering are been uh, taken forward to decrease the time necessary for incorporation of a company. As of now, incorporation takes more than uh, of nine days. Now it is reduced to four and a half days. The government is planning it to reduce further through the central registration system. And the next is Shom panel. So the finance minister Arun Jaitley has said that the government is considering the Shom panel recommendations. So the major recommendations include um, the Central Board of Direct Taxes, Central Board of Excise and Customs have clubbed together into one thing. And the income tax and wealth tax, uh, the details have to be submitted on one single form by the citizens. The use of uh, a PAN number has to be further encouraged into the country. So these recommendations given by the SHOM panel, they are under the consideration, active consideration. And also with regard to implementation of general anti-avoidance rules, uh, the show panel has strongly recommended for. And coming to the Raghuram Rajan uh, so article, so uh, calling a spade as a spade is never dangerous. And it may hurt the people initially, but in the long run it provides a solution. Raghuram Rajan is the most respected economist among the fraternity and is the youngest RBI governor. So now, what he said is, many a times, uh, India is considered as a weak state uh, because of its inability to punish the wrongdoing and the wrongdoer. So in India, most of the non-performance assets are from the defaults of the industrial uh, big wigs uh, and who has no fear of law. So in these circumstances, uh, what he suggests is this. So any person who has defaulted on its loan, uh, he has no moral right to continue or run a company. He has no moral right to be a, on the board of the company. It is because he failed on his personal front with regard to the management of the finances. So, and the second thing is, uh, if, uh, if you observe the banking structure and performing of the banking functions, there is an elitist bias. A retail, I mean retail person, a retail loan giving is stressed high for recollection. And there are many flexibilities are available for so-called as big players. So this system has to be corrected and the customer sense has to grow in the public banking system. And Raghuram Rajan equating all the people who are the customers of the banks is one such a step in the now forward direction. Coming to the Iran and China relationships, you know that Iran is can provide for Western parts of China a gateway for development and second is the cheap oil provides for the energy security to the China and also the uh, Iran is a critical partner with regard to this uh, Mr. Z's favorite program that is um, uh, Silk Road. So in this context when all the countries have imposed the sanctions against Iran, uh, China stood behind Iran and helped it to develop its uh, infrastructure. It has taken up multiple infrastructure and uh, manufacturing plants in, the, in Iran, which has developed the necessary goodwill for the China in Iran. So in this context, Iran-Pakistan-India pipeline is, uh, I mean, guess to be, or is said to be moving as Iran-Pakistan-China pipeline too. So there are certain speculations with regard to that. So it is also commented that India lost an opportunity with uh, West Asia, by not deeply engaging with Iran. So China has got the security, connective, energy security connectivity and also is able to use Iran as a source or a destination for its excessive capital. Now coming to this Jika virus, 
why this we are talking about uh, i am not very much fascinated about this uh, but however it is caused by edes aegypti mosquito which is very much prevalent in india too you can see the dengue and everything so in this context that chaki or chika virus it causes the microcephaly and bread birth defects uh, so it means what is the propensity india will get affected by this is a question but however zika virus spread by the mosquito bite that is uh, uh, edes aegypti finally after the delhi experiment now you know that odd even rule it has raised the expectations of the participation of the citizens uh, with regard to the control of the pollution so in this context the developmental theory became equivalent with consumption so in the aspirational class especially the middle class in the indian urban areas uh, it equates the development with consumption so when uh, consumption has become the ultimate objective of the development then pollution garbage solid waste develop, uh, solid increase in the solid waste in the urban areas are the natural outcomes so in this context unless this aspirational middle class sees or participates in a deeper argument over development uh, the situation might not change so in this context the success of the odd even formula shows that the people are willing to come forward to lose their uh, uh, facilities uh, towards the common benefit to fight the pollution so these are the articles of today's newspaper and uh, enjoy your republic day all the best thank you very much